would like to introduce to you our speaker, the man of God sent to speak to us this evening for our first student LA convention. In his busy time in the house, he still had time to visit churches and speak on special occasions, especially on the gatherings of literature evangelists. He is responsible for all publications, books, periodicals, magazines that is printed and distributed in the field from the Philippine Publishing House because he occupies the position, the vice president in charge for the editorial department of the Philippine Publishing House. He is our editor-in-chief. If you happen to uh, read Hotel Home Magazine, you can see every issue is the uh, regular features in our column. In his preparation for this ministry, he finished his education in theology and the master of ministry at IAS. Our speaker is from Western Mindanao Conference. He works in different fields of uh, ministry as a district pastor, a church pastor, a communication director, and, and he also was one or occupied the position as a health director. Before his coming to or election to the Philippine Publishing House, he serves as an executive secretary of the same Western Mindanao Conference. Married to Mom Raisa, I think uh, they are not here with us tonight. Are they coming? Raisa. Okay. Yeah. And have uh, been blessed with one son. Jan and Denzel. Mom Raisa is working at the Philippine Publishing House just the same. Our speaker, you can see him with a young face and look handsome. He's a man of God, Pastor Omerto M. King King II. Shall we pray that the Lord will bless him? Thank you very much, Sir Mario. My respect to the publishing leaders, uh, Sir Mario, Sir, uh, Sir Freddy, Sir Aurelio. Uh, happy to see you tonight. Good evening, everyone. It's a privilege for me to be here. It's a privilege to be invited, and uh, I praise the Lord for this privilege to uh, speak before young people who are very interested in the work. I have to tell you that I am the most unlikely person to stand before you tonight. And I say unlikely in a sense that uh, I am not really qualified for the position. I have not enough preparation to be given such a huge responsibility at Philippine Publishing House and for that matter uh, in any work I should not be standing before you, I should not be occupying so many positions like the one mentioned by uh, Sir uh, Mario Palaya. but uh, because of God's grace I am able to stand before you tonight 
See, I am. Um, I graduated in uh, Mountain View College at the age of 20 with a degree in theology. And uh, what can a 20-year-old pastor do? So uh, I had a short stint in canvassing work, which is not enough to brag about. But I am very thankful to the Lord for giving me the, the privilege to, to work. When I served Western Mindanao Conference for, for 15 years, I served as a district pastor, I served as a church pastor for six years in uh, one of the city churches in Western Mindanao Conference. And after serving there, for six years, I, at, the, at, at a rather young age, the age of 31, I was elected to become the, the executive secretary of Western Mindanao Conference. And I served there for two terms. I had no training to be called at such a young age. But then I remember when I was 20 years old, when the president uh, let me tell you a little bit, would you mind? Let me tell you a little bit of my story. Uh, when I was 20 years old, I was called to pastor um, in uh, Dipolog City, the place where I think I, I saw in my Facebook uh, a student of AUP, he's one of the students here at uh, AUP, uh, Doreen, Doreen, She's from the Polo City. Anyway, I was called to serve there as a church pastor. And after, after uh, a year and uh, six months of serving as a church pastor in the Polo, I was 21 then, I was, this, I was frustrated because as a young pastor, I could not uh, I mean, the, the responsibility was so huge, so I have decided to tell, talk to the president during one of the workers' meetings. The president then was Andrew Yap. And I talked to Andrew Yap, I said, maybe I need some time to study, go somewhere and study more because I think I was still very young and um, I, maybe the responsibility of a pastor requires that you should be at least, you know, old enough to be able to handle committees and old enough to be able to deal with all the personalities in, in the city. So I told the president, uh, Andrew Yap, I need to study more. And Andrew Yap said, okay, if that is your reason, then what can I do? So I told him, next workers meeting, I will not be around because I'll be off to study. Uh, During the last night, Andrew Yap came to my room. It was startling to think that a president of the conference would come to the Polo City at that time, which is a um, three and a half hour drive away from where the conference office uh, is. It's a very, uh, it's a long drive actually for a president of the conference to travel from Uzami City to the Polo City just to see me. And he said, uh, Pastor Gigi, I need to talk to you. And I said, yes, Elder, uh, this is my last day and I'm hoping to go home uh, after our talk and be able to go to the university and study more. And he said, Pastor Gigi, if, I, if there is an opening in the district, would you accept it? I said, well, I want to give it a try, Pastor, but let's pray first. And I was, I felt that the Lord called me in the ministry. So that was the beginning of my calling and that since then there was no turning back. So uh, now I am standing before you and as I have said, I am the most unlikely person to be standing before you uh, tonight. But I am thankful for the grace of God that He has called me. 
after serving for two terms as the executive secretary of the conference. One time there was there was a search committee who came passed by Western Mindanao Conference, and uh, the president of Philippine Publishing House mentioned that Pastor Ging, your name, you're one of the uh, many names that are being considered to become the uh, editor in chief of Philippine Publishing House. And I said, I forget, forget it, Pastor. If please don't mention my name in the committee, and I'm, I'm not interested. It's very difficult for us as a family to go to Manila, and you know we're not really that cut and trim for that particular job. But then anyway, uh, the committee um, was called. They discussed. They prayed upon. And unfortunately, or fortunately, there was no other name considered. It was only my name. <laughs> and so they told me, "Look, Pastor Ming, we need you." And things like that. And I said, "Okay." My philosophy in the ministry is whenever there is a committee that met and prayed and my name came out, I would go wherever that is because that is my commitment. If there is a prayer that took place and if there is a name being considered and I happen to be that person considered, I will go wherever that is. My son cried because, you know, we have no friends here in Manila. But then I realized that I have so many friends. We have no friends and, you know, it's so far away. I don't speak Tagalog. Yung Tagalog ko, mga kapatid, ay medyo karumadungal. So, I don't, you don't understand. So, but uh, here I am in my second year of work in, uh, in uh, the Philippine Publishing House. And I'm thankful to the Lord. I met a lot of friends and I noticed that I, or, not only that I met new friends, but I, discover that some of my old friends are actually here. So I'm thankful for that. So let me give you a little bit of a presentation tonight. The title is Grace on a Piece of Paper. And uh, I find this very interesting, so I'd like to share it with you. Um, two days ago, three days ago, I was at Central Luzon Conference. Uh, Pastor uh, Freddy Matera invited me to promote the publishing work uh, among the workers of Central uh, Luzon Conference and I was very happy to share with them this message. Can I? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. Ano ba yung signal natin? Ganito. Okay. Magganito. Alright. Now, Matthew chapter 27. Then I would, I would leave my Bible with them because uh, makikita niyo naman lahat. Okay, Matthew 27. Please open your Bibles in the book of Matthew, chapter 27. It's a very interesting story, actually, and I'd like to share this with you. Matthew chapter 27, verse 19. Let me read, and I'm using the New King James Version. Matthew chapter 27, verse 19. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent to him, saying, while he, referring to Pilate, Okay? Pilate. You heard the name, right? Have you heard Pilate? Yes, okay. While Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent to him, saying, Have nothing to do with that just man, for I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him. passage and why am I bringing this up is because this passage is the only passage in the New Testament where you can find the wife of Pilate being mentioned. You cannot find this one in Mark, in Luke, and in John. This is the lone passage in the New Testament and for that matter, the whole Bible. So this is very interesting. Why, 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 did, why did Matthew mention this one? Why did it mark? Why not Luke? Why not John? So, the question is if we remove this particular passage, makes no difference, right? Makes no difference in the New Testament. You can just, I mean, you, you, would, you wouldn't even notice the flow of the narrative that the wife of Pilate was even mentioned. 
mention there. So, kasi hindi na, hindi na nga na-mention sa Mark, sa Luke at sa John. Ito lang talaga ang nag-iisang passage in the whole New Testament where you can find that the wife of Pilate is mentioned. And what's the story about? Why mention her? And what is interesting actually is that, that the book of Matthew is very specific. It's written in a it is written in a very specific way that the credential of Jesus is mentioned. What have you noticed in chapter 1 of the book of Matthew? What have you noticed? The mention of many names there, right? Names are very important in the book of Matthew. He is actually introducing Jesus and presenting his credential that he is indeed the son of David. That's where you find the mention of many names. Why omit the name of Pilate? Pilate's wife. You know the story is very interesting. Let's proceed. Who is Pilate's wife? Why did Matthew mention her in his narrative? Why did she mention the dream in her letter? And who gave her the dream? That is the big question actually. Okay, I have told you about Pilate's wife. I have told you a little why Matthew mentioned her in his narrative. But why did she mention the dream in the, in the first place? Let's go back to the passage again. <clears throat> According to the letter, have nothing to do with that just man, for I have suffered many things today in a dream of him. Now, okay, okay. Are you ready for my questions? Hello? Yes. Ready? Yes. Okay, if I may ask you, what is the purpose of Jesus coming here? Why did Jesus come here? Huh? Okay, there, at least there is one audible word I heard. Safe. Are you agreeable with that? Yes. Safe. Now, if Jesus' purpose of coming here is to save us, go back to the passage now. Okay, here's the passage. He or she was actually instructing her husband not to pronounce judgment against Jesus because if she found that Jesus was innocent. If Pilate, the husband of that woman, obeyed the wife, then Jesus would not have died on the cross. Right? Yeah. Jesus would not have died. Right? Yeah. yeah. Question. Who gave her the dream? God or Satan? <laughs> that is the question. Who gave her the dream? God or Satan? Some are saying God, others are saying Satan. Well, anyway, that's your assignment. But would you like to know the answer? Would you like to know the answer? Yes. Okay, let's proceed. Okay. Be before before giving you the answer, I'm sorry, sorry, sir, I'm giving you a hard time. No, recording. Hindi na ako mag move. Okay. Anyway, now, there is one, at least, how many are theology students here? Theology, very good. Okay. Study hard and work hard and someday soon you become editor-in-chief. Better than the present editor. Okay, now, there is one characteristic in the book of Matthew that you cannot find in other New Testament books, like in, particularly and exclusively in the Gospels, because the Gospels are unique. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There is one characteristic there that you cannot find elsewhere in Mark, in Luke, and in John. Would you like to know? Yes. Okay. There is the mention of a dream. Like the text that we read, you cannot find elsewhere the mention of the word dream. And for that matter, at, at least you can 
can recall. Di ba sabi ng bis, asawa niya, I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him. Now, why the mention of the dream? Is it in passing or intentional? Let me tell you that it is intentional. Let's proceed ma'am. Okay. For example, Matthew chapter 1, let me read. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take you, Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Example number two, let's proceed. Matthew chapter 2. Then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. Example number three. Now when they had departed, verse 13, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream again, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother. Flee to Egypt and stay there until I bring you word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Another example, let's proceed. Verse 19. Now when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream again to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the young child's life were dead. Again. Matthew chapter 22, but when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea instead of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there and be warned by God in a dream. Wow! You find this one repeated over and over and over again in the book of Matthew. The angel of the Lord visited him in a dream. God visited him in a dream. So, let's go back to the question. Who gave her the dream? Oh, easy. You're right. Correct. But you know what? It's very interesting. Very interesting. See, one text makes a lot of difference. Right? Just one text. Akala ko what? Simple, simple text lang yun. Wedding, you remove mo, and you cannot see the difference. But now we're seeing the difference. One text makes a lot of difference. And to think that that missive, that letter was just very short. Very short. You can write that one in a 3 by 5 piece of paper. Diba? Okay. Short na lang. Okay. Napaka short yung letter na yun. But it speaks volume, brothers and sisters. You see? What's the lesson? Let's proceed. Here is the answer. Here's the backdrop, the script. You see, I'm in. I don't know. Ang theology kasi, iba ang discipline ng theology. Sa writing, sa, sa pag uh, na-expose kayo sa creative writing, especially like in, 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 you know, in writing short stories or novels, that kind of use, you are paying attention to the script. So, so instead of saying context, like that's a popular jargon of theology students, context, 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 di ba? Mga context, kayo lang naman na naka But for me, let me just focus on Let's look at the backdrop of the script. Script. Para story ba? Okay? Here is the script. Christ's appearance made a favorable impression upon Pilate. His better nature was roused. He had heard of Jesus and his works. His wife had told him something of the wonderful deeds performed by the Galilean prophet who cured the sick and raised the dead. Now this revived as a dream in Pilate's mind. So even Ellen White emphasized a little bit about dream. Okay. Here is now the answer to the big question I asked just a while ago. 
while Pilate was hesitating as to what he should do with Jesus, a messenger pressed through the crowd and handed him the letter from his wife which read, Have now thou nothing to do with that just man, for I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. And when Pilate received that very small piece of paper, his face grew pink. You know, when you go out this summer for canvassing, or probably some of you are probably exposed to going out and, you know, doing canvassing work while on weekends, regardless of the size of the book, it may be very small, or be when you present that to the people and when they read, when they start reading the book, it could be that God is calling them. It could be that God is calling them. By his face, blue pain. Let's proceed. Now, here is the story. Where can you find this one? You can find this one in the desire of Okay? Even now, Pilate was not left to act blindly. A message from God. Okay. So there, is, there should be no question about it. The dream comes from God. A message from God warned him from the deed he was about to commit. And in answer to Christ's prayer, the wife of Pilate had been visited by an angel from heaven. And in a dream, she had beheld the Savior and conversed with him. Very interesting. Pilate's wife was not a Jew. Now, this is something that we need to open up. This is something that we need to understand. Because many times we are conceited. We are conceited. Especially that we are members of this church. Especially that we are Seventh-day Adventists. We think we know it all. We think that we alone has the knowledge of salvation. We think that we're the only people... That, that, that we'll be saved when Jesus Christ will come. We become conceited with the fact that we know a lot of things from the Bible. But listen to this. Pilate's wife was not even a Jew. Pilate's wife was not even a Seventh-day Adventist. But she had the privilege of conversing with God. You just don't know it. God has a special dealings with people. And even if they are not Jew, if, even if they are not Seventh-day Adventists, God had a talk with the wife of Pilate. She was not a Jew, but as she looked upon Jesus in her dream, she had no doubt of his character. She knew him to be the Prince of God. She saw him on trial in the judgment hall. She saw the hands tightly bound as the hands of a criminal. She saw Herod and his soldiers doing dreadful work. She heard the priests and rulers. Sorry. She heard the priests and rulers filled with envy and malice, madly accusing. She heard the words, We have a law and by our law, he ought to die. She saw Pilate. Who's Pilate? Who's Pilate? Her husband. She saw Pilate in her dream give Jesus to the scourging after he had declared, I find no fault in him. She, she heard the condemnation pronounced by her beloved husband. She saw him Christ. She saw him give up Christ to his murderers. She saw the cross uplifted on Calvary. She saw the earth wrapped in darkness and heard the mysterious cry and his finish. Still another scene met her gaze. She saw Christ seated upon the great white cloud but the earth in his face and his murderers fled from the presence of his glory. With a cry of horror, she awoke and at once wrote to Pilate words of warning. She saw the trial. She saw the condemnation. She saw her husband. She saw the death of Jesus. She saw the resurrection. She saw the ascension of Jesus. She even saw the second coming. She was not a Jew. She was not a Seventh-day Adventist. She even saw the things that will happen in the future because God had revealed it to her. She had a conversation with God. It was very unique. Very unique. And, and she wrote a small piece of paper, had it carried by an emissary, and that young man went straight to Pilate and he gave it to Pilate. And when Pilate read that, his face grew big. Because he recognized 
passing moments of our lives every day. Sometimes we are not aware of the things that are going on around us. And if we, even if we are consciously aware of the things that we are doing, there are things that are not seen. But they are part and parcel of our existence. We don't really know what's going on around us. Especially, you know, you have, especially you theology students, you have to know that, that God is in full control. As much as you already know that the devil is the this is the background of the story. Jesus knew that the Holy Spirit was striving with Pilate. Pilate did not hear about it. But the Holy Spirit was striving with Pilate and he gave him opportunity to acknowledge his conviction with that small piece of paper. Pilate understood Christ's meaning, but pride arose in his heart. He would not acknowledge the conviction that pressed upon him. He was not aware that the small piece of paper was the only and the last extension of God's grace to him. When you visit homes, it may be that the books you are selling are the last and the only extension of God's grace. May mean a difference between life and death. Not be aware of it. Not be aware of it. But it could be the last and only medium. Like Pilate. Now, here's the second one. Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was. Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. You recall the story? Right? Remember it? I have a question for you. Are you ready for the question? Okay. Why did Pilate write the inscription that way? Do you know? Would you like to know the answer? Yes. Here is the answer. A higher power than Pilate or the Jews had directed the placing of that inscription above the head of Jesus. So it was not just Pilate who was involved there. A higher power than Pilate or the Jews had directed the placing of that inscription above the head of Jesus. In the providence of God, it was to awaken thought and investigation of the scriptures. The place where Christ was crucified was near to the city and thousands of people from all lands were there at Jerusalem and the inscription declaring Jesus of Nazareth, the Messiah, would come to their notice. And I want you to pay attention to the last statement. It is a very powerful statement. Let me read. It was a living truth transcribed by a hand that God had guided. Suddenly, Pilate felt compelled to write something. Did not even know why, but he just felt that he needed to write something. Didn't know what it is about that he's going to write, but anyway, he just felt compelled to write something. And he asked for a pen, and suddenly his hand moved. That's how I trans that's how I understood the story. Because it was a living truth transcribed by a hand that God had gu guided. He, he just felt like his hand moved and he wrote down something that is unplanned. And he wrote down something and he placed that above the head of Jesus. And later on, as you read the story of the Messiah of the ages, you will read there that the scribes and the Pharisees and the high priest was were actually embarrassed to know that, that the inscription was actually referring to Jesus himself. And so, later in the afternoon, they approached Pilate. And 
Pilate was very angry to see them. What is it now? And they said, Pilate, uh, there's something that we would like to correct from the statement you wrote about the hell of Jesus. And Pilate was even more angry. You are not my editor-in-chief. I am the editor-in-chief. What I have written, I have written. Have you read that in the story? Of course, the editor-in-chief was not there. <laughs> but Pilate said, what I have written, I have written. Don't dare correct what I have written. Because he felt that his hand moved and was guided by the Holy Spirit. Don't you know that when I read this one, this is the reason why I came here. This is the reason why I, I accepted the work as the editor-in-chief. Because I have told you, I am the most unlikely person to be seated in that position because I have no training, grammar. I'm just a theology graduate, man. I'm just a theology graduate. I am not a mass communication or an AP English. I just remember that I grew up with magazines because there are so many magazines at home like Popular Mechanics, uh, National Geographic, Time, and Asia Week. Those were magazines that I grew up with. But I'm a theology student. I am not qualified for the position. But when I read this one, I said, Lord, if you use the hand of Pilate to write something, you can also use my hand. Amen. Amen. Ne never mind my hand. It's complicated, Lord. <laughs> Just my hand. Just my hand. And every time I'm faced with a blank uh, computer screen, I pray, Lord, here I go again. I don't know what to write. It's fine. Use my hand. Like finally, he wasn't aware of what to write, but it was God that guided his hand. Sometimes we have no training. Lord, I don't know how to oppose people. You know, I know I'm a very shy person. I, <laughs> I don't know how. I, I, I don't know why I took up the ministry in the first place. And you know the one in charge for field school evangelism, sir? Pastor Paipa? Okay? It's a field school. Let's go to Oroqueta City. Oroqueta City is my birthplace. And it's very far away from from Mountain View College. Why Oroqueta? My, my birthplace? I grew up there. My father is not a Seventh-day Adventist. My father is not a Seventh-day Adventist. More, all of my friends are not Seventh-day Adventists. I grew up in a Catholic school. I did my master in, 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 in La Salle University, uh, my first master's. I had I had no Adventist friends, but Pastor Paipa said, let's go there. Ako mga kapatid. Iyang-iya ako kasi suddenly naka-necktie na ako. Tapos natala na Bible, ano nangyari eh? And Pastor Paipa said, okay, before we do public evangelism, you have to ride my jeepney and go around Orqueta City and announce to the people that there's going to be an evangelistic meeting. Mamerto, you are going to be the announcer. Imagine holding a microphone. I was really hiding. I covered my face. I was so embarrassed. But here I am, the most unlikely person standing before you. Let me just tell you a little of my story before I end. Is it okay? Here is my simple story. You know, three years ago, my mother died. I cried. In my many years of the ministry, I've been invited to many places. I, I comfort the bereaved family. And akala ko immune ako ba? Sa, akala ko immune ako sa mga ganong mga settings. But when my mother died, I told her I cried. And I told my, uh, in, after the burial, 
I told my it was a coincidence, but I happened to be in a room where my father also went. So after the burial, I stayed a little for a short while in 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 our in one of the rooms sa bahay namin. Tapos uh, after one hour, my father went inside the room, and I just felt that I that I needed to talk to my father because we never talk, we never discuss anything at all in our home. We don't talk about religion. He doesn't know about my work. He doesn't know that I am an ordained minister. But he, he knew, of course, that I am a pastor. But he, he, he did not know that I am occupying the vice president of the conference, being the executive secretary. And how I wish I can tell my father that I am the vice president of the conference. If you are only a Seventh-day Adventist, you should be very proud of your son. But I cannot tell that to my, to my father. And so I just told him that, can we talk? And he said, okay, let's talk. And I can sense that he was tired, he was so burdened. We just, uh, you know, buried our, my mom. And I said, the reason that I would like to talk to you, God, is this. I am, I, you just don't know that I'm a very busy person. I'm a very busy person, God. And the reason why I, I, I uh, I, I, I make it the point to pass by here and pray for you, even if I'm very busy, it's because of mom. Because of mom. Because mother is a seven-day Adventist. I told him that. I don't know where I got the courage to speak uh, like that to my daddy. I, I told him, sorry. The reason why I... why you know what if I was a communication director before and everywhere I go I preach about Hope Channel and I even had a, 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 a TV program every day in Rosati City and you know how boring that was you know facing the camera alone in my office magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat and you know what that's just a sidebar let's go back to the story okay now, I told my dad that the reason why I may not be able to visit you this often is because I'm very busy. And number two, we don't have something in common except that you are my father. You are not a Seventh-day Adventist. M Mother was a Seventh-day Adventist. I mean, we, we had so much, so many things like we pray together and we talk about how are you doing in your ministry and I'm excited to tell her about a lot of things in my ministry but there are so many things that I wanted to talk to you but I cannot because you are not a Seventh-day Adventist. But that, because I'm very busy and I may not be able to find time to visit you, here is my parting word. I said, God, If mother is right in what she believed in, if the Bible is true in what I, in, in, according to what it, how, according to the words and the promises written there, if I am right and mother is right in what we believe in the Bible, I told him, if Jesus, according to his promise, come and will take us to heaven. You will not be there. <laughs> I told him, honestly, you will not be there. But if the Bible is not true, I'm not either. Is that fair? Does that sound fair to you, God? Sadiko, if the Bible is not true, and if I am wrong in what I believe in, mother is wrong in what I believe in. Tabla tayo. But, if the Bible is true, and if mother and me, if I am right in what I believe in, then Jesus Christ will come and will be in heaven, but you will not be there. What is now your decision? <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? My father paused for a moment. That was Thursday night. We buried 
her mom two hours before that, Thursday night, my father paused for a moment and he said, Son, I want to be baptized. <laughs> Tinanong ko siya, Father, sino ba sa mga pastors ang gusto mong mag-baptize eh? Sabi niya, no, 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 no. I want you to baptize me. So sabi ko, this Saturday, God, I'll be, I'll be here this Saturday. Saturday, very early in the morning, I went back to our home. Nalak ko yung my only brother and his family. And I went to the room of my father. Bika ako doon. Sabi niya, sino ka? I said, your pastor son. Why are you here so early? I said, I came here because of what we had agreed upon Thursday night. Tama, no? So, he got up. He said, ano iso? I opened the cabinet. I said, choose. Ano gusto mo? We went to the river. I baptized my father. You know what? Seven months after we buried mom, seven months after I baptized my father, my father passed away. But I am so much thankful that I was able to bring him to the truth. Let's proceed. Okay. Pilate yielded to the demands of the mob rather than risk losing his position, he delivered Jesus up to be crucified. But in spite of his precautions, the very thing he dreaded afterward came upon him. It was very difficult, very hard for Pilate. He was actually playing politics. He refused to listen to his wife. He refused to listen to the conviction of the Holy Spirit because he wanted to preserve his position. He wanted to please the people. But what happened was, the very thing he dreaded afterward came upon him. His honors were stripped from him. He was cast down from his high office and stung, stung by remorse and wounded pride. Not long after the crucifixion, he ended his own life. So all who compromise with sin will gain only sorrow and ruin. It was last call for Pilate. That little piece of paper was actually his last call. God was calling him, but because of pride, he refused to accept the pleadings of the Holy Spirit. Brothers let us, and sisters, let us be encouraged to join in the publishing world. Amen? Amen. Just don't know it. You will make a lot of difference in the lives of just to know it. To some, it could be their last call. Could be their last call. God will soon do great things for us if we lie humble and believing at His feet. More than 1,000 will soon be converted in one day. Most of whom will trace their first conviction to the reading of our publication. You know, this is my favorite, my favorite uh, quotation from the writings of Ed White. When the first day when I reported for work at Philippine Publishing House, the first order of business was to request the editorial people to provide me with all the books related to publishing work. Because as I have told you, I have no training. I don't, I didn't know what to do as the editor. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to, what is my work? I, don't, I didn't even know what's my job description. So I requested that, please give me all the writings of Ellen White that talks about the publishing work. Here is one that I like the most. Our publishing work was established by the direction of God and under his special supervision, it was designed to accomplish a specific purpose. Seven, remember, I, I underlined the word, and I highlighted the word specific purpose. Publishing work, doing a specific purpose. 
Seventh-day Adventists have been chosen by God as a peculiar people, separate from the world. By the great cleaver of truth, he has cut them out from the quarry of the world and brought them into connection with himself. Yes, let's proceed. He has made them his representative and has called them to be ambassadors for him in the what? In the last word of salvation. Remember the three word, the three phrases I highlighted? First is Seventh-day Adventist. I highlighted the word Seventh-day Adventist. Especially called by God to do a specific work. And what is that work? The last work of salvation. Publishing work. Publishing for life seven day. Seven day Adventist given a specialized ministry. Publishing work. Doing the last work of salvation. What comes after the last?
custom sa 35 pesos. Diba? But, yung 35 pesos mo, if you give this to someone, okay, if you visit a home and introduce this book to someone, and with, at the end of the day, when we all get to heaven, and somebody will come to you and say, Mister, do you recognize me? And then you will say, Oh, I'm sorry. And then that person will say, You visited us in our home. Oh, really? And gave us this book. Then and only then will you realize that salvation is only 35 pesos. <laughs> That's the first realization. You will come to realize. And that person will come to you and say, Thank you. If not for your visit, if not for the book, I wouldn't be here in heaven. Amen. Wow! You will realize that salvation is just 35 pesos. And the second realization is, Why didn't I give more? Why didn't I visit it? more homes. Why didn't I distribute this literature? It is only 35 pesos. That's the second sad realization. Brothers and sisters, it's very important. We are doing a sacred work. This is no picnic when you go out. It's not easy. Dobermans and, you know, a lot of it's not, it's, it's not easy work. I, I have to tell you. What I can tell you is that this work is ordained by God. Amen. What I can tell you is that angels will accompany you as you go out and visit homes. Amen? Amen. This is a holy calling. And because this is holy, this is ordained. Equal to that of an like the minister, ordained, I am an ordained pastor. There is power in the printed page. And I hope that, that like the unnamed woman in the passage, in Matthew chapter 27, God Bless them, equip them, and may the power of the Almighty through the Holy Spirit protect them from harms and dangers and use them as a powerful instrument in the salvation of the people so that when you will come, plenty of souls will be there in heaven because of their ministry. Thank you, Lord, for using these humble students. Thank you for calling us. And may you forgive us for all our sins. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayer. And thank you also for this Sabbath evening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good evening. Amen.